All right, Tom Ballas with Base Gear Magazine here, and I'm joined today by Freddie Villano, one of our contributors, and uh, we got a special guest, Hansford Rowe, with us, and I'm going to turn this over to uh, Freddie to lead us into this discussion. Thanks, Tom. Hi, Hansford. Hi, Freddie. Hi, Tom. Um, so we're here with Hansford Rowe, world-famous, acclaimed bass player, uh, Montreal-based who's got a new custom built instrument out from Tau Guitars that he's uh, graciously sharing with us via the Zoom webs. And uh, we're gonna pick Hansford's brain a little bit about this new instrument and uh, find out what the catalyst was for designing it and what went into it and uh, how he likes it. And we'll, we'll hear some samples of it tonally and whatnot. Um, and so I think we'll start off with just uh, Hansford, why don't you tell us a little bit what we talked about the other day. You started talking about, um, you know, Tau guitars and how you came to know them and, you know, how the impetus right. for this bass came about. Yeah, I met Tau in, uh, uh, several years ago at NAMM. I'm terrible with, with, uh, I can get generally into the decade but the Time's um, a blur. yeah, I met him, I don't know, something like five years ago at NAM, where I just stumbled across him because I was looking at some of the luthier. Uh, there's a section where they have uh, lots of different luthiers from around the world who kind of congregate together. And the Tao stuff stood out to me. It's some of the most beautiful guitars I'd ever seen. And um, I met the two guys, John and Serge, and um, I almost bought a a Fetion, which is one of their uh, one of their hollow body arch tops. I, it was crazy beautiful, and so we. I had previous to that, as Freddie probably knows, I had I had started designing a base for Warwick. Um, that was going to be called the Montreal. It was going to be an update to a, a thumb, um, but that never got off the ground. So I started talking with the Tower guys about the possibility of a of a new base for me with a a uni unique body style. And in the last couple of years, I went to Belgium to Brussels, where they are, and. Uh, and talked about it some more with them. And then we got the project underway. It's uh, it's this base. It's called the Super Legera, which means super light. And that's the term that a lot of Italian car manufacturers use for their light version of a, of a certain model. Okay. Um, there's a lot of car automobile uh, references. They're probably, you know, stuff that, that that Tao and I are have as a common reference. They're not necessarily blatant in the design of the base, but we love Italian designers, and specifically uh, Marcello Gandini, who did a bunch of iconic cars in the '60s, and and we talked a lot about his lines and weight distribution, the just the, the general style of that of him during that period. You know, he did a an alpha called the Montreal. He did the Lamborghini Miura. He did some of the most beautiful cars of all time. The Lancia Stratos also. And so we, we hit it off. That's the best way to put it. And um, Serge, there's two guys, Serge and John. Serge is the guy who designed the body style. I then got really involved in the idea of it being super light and trying to trying to build a base that would represent the things I like the most in a base. So it's it's uh, it's I'm not trying to design a, a generic base, but except perhaps in terms of what I would prefer, you know. Yeah. So it, I, I wanted to try to kind, you know, I've played Warwick for for many years, and and I I have lots of them, and I think of them as uh, individual bases with individual character, and I wanted to com 
all character I really like in this one and then character in that one I like. And I wanted to try to get a couple of primary uh, kinds of tone and response together in one base if I could, you know. Uh, I want to have the transparency and the sustain, the, the clearness of the high end that I like from Warwick's, but I also wanted to have a little more beef when I'm using light gauge strings, uh, which sometimes I don't get, depending on the, the, the bass. And so I, I also went in a new direction with these Benedettis, which are custom wound, um, passive pickups, jazz style um, for this bass. Is the bass com is the bass completely passive? Yes, okay. and you know most of my you know me well, Freddie. Most of my basses are active, but then yeah. I I tear out anything that's preamp like in them, <laughs> and, and try to just use the uh, as straight a signal from the pickups as I can yeah. out, um, and that usually works fine. But here. Um, I wanted something uh, real natural and and very light, and so I don't know if you've seen the the uh, electronics box. You ready for some tech stuff? Oh yeah, it's it's really beautiful. It has a magnet and just slides open. Wow, it's, it's real elegant, clean, real clean and simple. Just the pots, and it just snaps back. Right The, uh, oh. yeah, I wanted back. I want to backtrack for a second about the shape of the base. Is okay. So was the shape something that you had input in, or you said that Sergey uh, designed it? Yeah, the design is 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 Serge in Serge. French. Okay, Serge. Serge. Yeah, he he um, he came up with this basic form, this shape. Okay, and then then we talked about how it could be a kind of. Um, this is this resembles a NACA duck on a car, you know, like the air entrance of the on the hood kind of things. How can we keep it light? How can we have some of the my favorite references in the back are are some really interesting curves? Yeah, you know, you have the straight line across the top here, which sort of centers the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, I love that. And then then you have just lots of curves, right? And that's these these two here are very Gandini esque. <laughs> and they all sort of swell towards this large arch in the bottom that looks like this. But that also makes the base very uh, properly weighted. You know, if I can put it on my leg, it'll fall one way or the other, but it's generally pretty, you know, yeah. balanced. And light, it's 7.8 pounds. It's really, really light. It's, any other? It's the, the body is wood? The body is ash. Yeah. And the neck is Bosnian maple sandwich with a stripe of wingate down the middle. You probably can't see it with this resolution, but it's tinted black. And the there's a strip uh, between two two strips of Bosnian maple is a wing gauge strip that go, runs the whole length you know it's neck through yeah obviously yeah. it's interesting because the finish the the finish and the shape almost make it look like it's a composite material rather than yeah. it being wood yeah it's, it has oh, that yeah. kind of aesthetic vibe to it yeah it's it, yeah plus the kind of modern vibe yeah. to it it makes yeah. you think that perhaps it, it would be composite yeah. there is a titanium truss rod <laughs> and and the hip shots they're the only outsourced yeah. thing on the base but they're customized to be super light yeah um the, what uh, about those knobs the knobs well all of the hardware that you see is yeah. all it's all proprietary it was all built for this base yeah and uh you know if we sell any other super legeras, that would be the hardware you would get so these it's all brushed aluminum. The uh, the bridge, I spent a lot of time with them on because I had some specific uh, design parameters we were trying to achieve, and that was to, for it to be as, as tool-free as possible, right? So 
I, I hate having to find little Allen keys all over the place on a bridge when you're trying to do the basic adjustments. And so we got it down to, to being completely tool free except for one little mm -hmm. Allen key, which is on each saddle that just locks it in place. Can you still hear me okay when I'm like close like this? The, um, if you loosen the strings, even just slightly, you can just push the saddle back and forth for intonation. And you can, if you release the string, you can just turn the, the actual saddle itself, the screw, and it'll go up and down, right? So yeah. you have, you have uh, intonation, action, and then you lock it in with one little Allen for each one. So it's, it's pretty simple. And it actually works. I've been I've been messing with it, <laughs> and and uh, I'm really happy that it works as well as, as it does. And it's it's also extremely uh, resonant. The whole the whole bass is. And then all all of this is made strictly for this bass, right? The knobs are are just a brushed aluminum circle. And then inside, just like the pickups, the same thing, brushed aluminum, the covers are painted the same color as the, yeah. as the body. So they sort of float there. And what are your controls the, there? Yeah, it's just volume and uh, fade between the pickups. Okay. Not that, and and not are those pickups in the 70s jazz position? Basically, I mean, they're, they're they're Benedetti, so out of you know all that stuff is like secret sauce. How right. we, the kind of winding they use and everything, um, they're specific for this base, but I don't know what's in there that much. <laughs> the um, I did want them to be. I didn't want to see any eye holes or any other kinds of uh, noise in the design. So. I had them figure out a way and they, you know, these things take months sometimes. It's one little thing you want and it could take months to figure out a proper solution. But there are four screws in the back that adjust the height. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. and, and that way um, it's clean on the front. Yeah, know, the nice. The tolerances are really, really close. Right? And then there's this, there's all these strange parallel phenomena. I mean, I could just look at it for hours. The, um, you know, this line is, is not uh, parallel to the floor. If you put the neck completely straight, it slightly goes up. Yeah. So it's offset against the parallel lines that you get from the frets. Then, but all of that lines up to take you to the bridge. So there's, it's it's a complex set of things that look simple, but you can, just like beautiful cars, you can keep looking at it, and then you walk a little bit further around and you look again, and then you go around back and you look again. You know, <laughs> a beautiful design is like that, and and of course a, a whole lot of the aesthetics were were carefully considered. You know, I really wanted something that I think is beautiful, right? So, did you debate the color? Like that? Oh, yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. That, <laughs> that was one of the hardest things because it's um, most of my bases are natural wood and yeah. and sometimes they're tinted, couple are painted, but most of the time it's nice to hear the wood. So they they use this very soft and not heavy paint that is sourced directly from Lamborghini. It's a What's it called uh, again? Oro Helios, which is uh, Golden Sun, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, there are a couple of Lambos that came with this color. Um, the uh, One of the SV Aventadors came, you could order it with this color. Uh, so we you spent a lot of time on it. Yeah. You didn't want Ferrari Red? <laughs> I got red bases. I got a couple of them. Um, it, it could have been. I love yeah. red. I mean, yeah. it, we just, I thought that was such a beautiful. Oh, that's it, beautiful. It is. You know, and I'm not big on Lamborghinis because they're a little bit flash for, for my style, especially mm -hmm. modern ones. But the older ones, uh, the Espada and the Mura, uh, they're very close to my heart. So 
we I figured it would be okay to have a Lamborghini color. <laughs> That's a wingy fingerboard. It's a wingy fingerboard. All the markers are uh, brushed aluminum. Also, the uh, what is the, what is the symbol? Is there the no? Symbol? It's not a symbol. It's, it's just no. It's just double double at the octave and and okay. together. Yep. Yeah. Which lines up with this strip here, which sort yeah. of. I like how there's a rounded edge to the bottom of the headstock uh, above the nut there. Yeah. You, you know, that's a very unique look. Yeah, which sort of reflects the, the, the round down here. Yeah. 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 I'm not usually big on uh, what are they called? Uh, Freddie, what do they call when the bass only has one horn? Single, single cut. horn? Sing single yes. cut. Single, single cut. cut. Normally, I, I, I think they look uh, ungainly, you know, lopsided and heavy and weird looking. But this one's, I get the advantages of the single cut without having to suffer much from the aesthetics of it, I think. <laughs> yeah. Did, was there ever any consideration to do this as a just intonation base or? You, well, oh yeah, definitely. Because as you can see, I'm, I, I spend most of my time doing that these days. Yeah. But I figured it was better to do a, a uh, kind of standard version of it um, in the hopes that uh, some other people might want one. Yeah. Um, you can, with, with Tao, you can get pretty any modification you want, right? And, and I will probably do a, a fretless with markers, something like this one, uh, eventually. This one is J.I. Markers. Can you see them? Yes. It's a fretless. So I'll, I'll someday I'll, I'll do some more. But first I wanted to, you know, I, I can't really call this a prototype because it, it is in the sense that it's the first one. And, and maybe we'll, we'll have a couple of ideas about it but it plays it plays beautifully and and it's completely functional now uh we spent way too much time on it to to think of it as an actual prototype where you throw something together and see how it's working you know this this works well since you mentioned uh it playing beautifully that might be a good segue into hearing <laughs> a little bit of, well i, I can show this. you the the tone of it at least yeah um let me know if you can hear it okay. So this is everything centered and full volume. It's amazing how lively it sounds um, for a passive bass. That's right. It, um, it does, and it has unbelievable sustain. And if I go to, more towards the bridge, I mean the, uh, the neck pickup, you can get a more classic kind of sound. Uh, yeah. But you still have sustain.
Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, yeah. So I have a question. So being that this is the prototype, were you able to test out various iterations of this along its journey to right. ensure that you were going to get the amount of sustain that you want out of it and things like that? The answer is no. Oh man! Wow. They're they're in Belgium and I'm here. We, we did yeah. a lot of we did a lot of talking, and we also did a whole lot of sending of of uh, audio files. Okay. Where where I I tried to establish a language with them. Like this is what I think is bright. This is what I think is is not bass heavy, um, and played a lot of different tones from a lot of different bases. So we we talked about that kind of thing, but you never know. I mean, even when you do try stuff out, it, it when you finally get, you know, I did enough uh, custom shop bases to know that it's a roll of the dice. You think you know what you're doing <laughs> and then yeah. you, fi you find out uh, when you get the base. Yeah. Even w there's so many variables that don't have clear ramifications like pickup placement and right. and and the wood combinations and the, and the fret material and so forth. By the time it, you get it, uh, I've been agreeably surprised and and surprised disagreeably also, you know, when you think you know what you're doing and then you get you get a surprise. So, yeah. I mean, it's part of the fun, too. I this came out really well to my expectations. It, it has that kind of nice organic sound with uh, with a wood side to it, but a whole lot of sustain. And yet it's pretty beefy, too. When I when I go on the bass. I mean, it sounds yeah. like bass. What gauge, what type of strings are you using? These are very light gauge. I, I, I go between very light 30 to like 125, 30 on the G string down to 125 on the D string. And I also go 40 down to like 130 sometimes, everything up uh, 10. So that even 40s are light gauge, and you know, so it's they're always light. So my thing is trying to get uh, keep the advantages of light gauge while still having some real beef, right? That's that's one way to describe the the tone parameters that we were going after for this base. Those stainless or nickel or these are stainless. These are DR high beams. Okay. I've been working on some trying to get some specific uh some specific strings made for the hertz of each end of each string and that I've, I've been doing some research with another string company called string joy just to to try to test some stuff where they have a, this ability to adjust the tension of the core while they wrap and then they have a ratio and depending on the materials involved, you can you can pretty much say, I want this string to be right for 30 hertz, or this string to be right for 35 hertz, and so forth. And we've been trying different things to see how how it relates. You know, does it really does it really work? So you could have a you could have a string that bends less easily, but is still really bright, and the reverse. You could have a softer nickel core, uh, nickel wrap uh, string that's still round wound, which is not so bright as these stainless ones, but but still is easy to bend and, and lively without being quite as bright as, as the high beams could be, which I love. You know, I've been using them for years, Freddie. You know that. Yeah. No, it's amazing that they, without your physical input, you know, I mean, because it was all done virtually, that they crafted this space that seems to complement what I know of your playing style very well. Yeah, more power to them. They, yeah. it's, it's, um, you know, it costs a, it will cost people a fortune, but hopefully they'll get, they'll be able to profit from, uh, from the amount of time. I mean, we did also did it during COVID, so there yeah. wasn't got, there wasn't going to be a whole lot of traveling around anyway. Uh, did we talk about the nut? What is the nut made out of? <clears throat> The nut is made out of the same thing as the French, which is that Malchor. I told you in the specs. Do you have the specs there? It's yeah. a nickel. They call it nickel, but it's. Read what I sent you. 
It's coming. Eighteen uh, percent nickel silver. Uh, That's it. The Nailer high rate. Yeah, yeah, it's the high high one, the high ratio one. Same as the frets. The frets are polished and and yeah. not the nut, but it's the same material. I like that the extra length that this bridge configuration gives you, especially for the B string, because um, I imagine that it creates a bit more tension on the B string. And so you get a nice tight low end rather than a, a floppy. Yes, it doesn't of. doesn't sound floppy, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I've been worrying about that kind of thing, particularly because of like this bass is a J.I. bass. And it, but it's tuned in an open C tuning, so they're all completely different tensions than what you would expect. It right. goes it goes C G C G, and then a B flat and a half, the, the harmonic seventh of of the C. So those are all unusual tensions. I mean, you know, some are 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 kind of close to what you would expect, but um, like the G string, the higher G string. But the other ones are really whacked and they get floppy in a hurry if you don't watch out. So uh -huh. I'm, I've been really interested in that. But it's so light. When I pick up the other ones and I come back to it, it's just, <laughs> awesome. It's just awesome. Yeah. So are we going to hear this bass on a project soon, or what's what's going on in that area? All righty. I know Gong Expresso was probably the last recording that was out, right? Yeah, that album called Decadence is still the last one. We're supposed to be doing a, a follow-up to that, myself and Julian, the guitar player, who I've been playing with for a long time. Um, but it's been delayed because of COVID. You know, I was going to use Francois Coase, who's the drummer who I've been playing with over the years, ever since Gong days. And um, he lives in Paris, and he broke his elbow, and he's unvaccinated. And <laughs> although, can can you say that publicly about people without, get, <laughs> with, without getting them in trouble? Um, but yeah, there was no he was coming over. We were supposed to record in January, so we put it off a bit. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, you know, the all my life I've struggled with drummers. I mean, I play with some great drummers. It's not that you can't find great drummers, but there's always some problem, whether it's where they're too far away or they're too persnickety or they can only play one style really well and, and can't play quietly or something. There's always something. <laughs> and with, you know, with Gongzilla, Bon and I went through like six drummers in the, in the course of 10 years. So here it is again, another trouble uh -huh. with a drummer. <laughs> but we'll sort it out, and uh, that, that will probably be the next project, another Gong Espresso record. Cool. You've grown through more drummers than Spinal Tap. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> I have. <laughs> um, but... Uh, yeah, there's no lack of good ones. It's it's getting the stars to line up so that you're you're. I also, you know, I don't make it easy because I I really do prefer to play with with band members as opposed to just calling some guy to come to a session, even if he's really great. Um, I've had success with that with Gary Husband because he and I are old friends. We've been playing together since I think it was 1980, the first time we played together, and. Um, and so he feels like a band member. We both have the same references, with, you know, with Alan. And and when he comes to do a record, I may have to end up doing that if we don't work things out with Francois. <laughs> but because he, he always feels like a band member to me, no matter if I haven't seen him in ages or not. But I prefer that to, to because I like to see what a group comes up with more than just getting a guy to play what I want, you know, yeah. which is not that easy. I mean, even not because what I want is so difficult, but just because it's a way of going about it, trying to tell somebody to do something is not the way to go, in my opinion. Yeah. So. Has, has this instrument inspired any new musical ideas for you? I know like sometimes when I'm doing a review, if I really like an instrument, like it, the, the main 
um, barometer for me is if it makes me create, feel creative, I guess. Yeah. Absolutely, Freddie. I know exactly what you mean. And I can't say yes because I'm still getting used to it, but I was really agreeably surprised that I kept playing it as soon as I got it and that I wanted to come back down to play it some more and I was getting a good feel from it, you know? So mm -hmm. I think I think it will it will inspire me just fine, especially tone wise when it comes to recording, because I'll, I'll get otherwise it, you know, it is a it is something that I'm familiar with, you know, a five string, 26 frets. And of course, the, the neck feels right to me because I, I I asked for it to be that way. So it's it's not destabilizing in a good way like other times I've tried things in just intonation, for example, where where you get a new fret set up or or something and or when I'm using open tuning in, in J.I. and you just that is really revelatory. It's like uh, it's like going back to the garage. You just start playing. You hear things. You go, oh, what is that? That sounds cool. You know, and yeah, it's hard to get that on a tw 12 tone equal bass built to my specs because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm used to it. Yeah. But but i was very agreeably surprised by by how comfortable it feels and how much i want to keep playing it i play it every day these days so yeah cool that's beautiful it sounds great thanks tom and thanks for uh letting me present it to the world through you guys i appreciate it My yeah pleasure man. thank you yeah. you have some picks right yeah, we have some picks. We'll we'll be floating those out there as well. And certainly, if somebody's interested, they can go to TauGuitars dot com and find out more. Absolutely. All right. Well, it's good to see you again, Freddie. Yeah, you too, Annie. It's been a while. <laughs> I was hoping to do this in person, so we'll have to to have a a, a rain check on that. That's yeah. To catch uh, up. Perhaps we can see each other at Nam, if not before summer. Yeah. Summer Nam yeah. in in LA. Winter Nam in the summer. Yeah. Winter. Yeah. So there, times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if that will. Uh, if that, does anybody know if that's just going to be a one year one off thing or? I haven't I'm heard just, that. I suspect it's a one off unless yeah. they're going to actually kill Summer Nam, which I, I hope not. But, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, will, right. Be will Tom? Will you be there? I I will not make summer NAM. I uh, will not make the NAM show in June this year because my daughter is graduating high school at the same oh. time, and she takes preference. All right, <laughs> that's a good reason. Yep. Um, but we'll catch up soon. I hope. Absolutely. Thanks, gentlemen. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. We'll see you. Thank Friday. you both. Yep. Take care. Answer. Take so care. long. Thanks, Tom.